Her heads out into a hunting territory. And they begin to explore on their own. They might look like your average house pet, but these ones are as wild and predatory as any big cat. Every meal they eat must be hunted down. But that's not as easy as you'd think. When the people left here, the rodent population went into decline. So she's had to become an even more efficient predator to keep her hungry litter fed. But every single creature she catches comes packed with more than protein. This area was subjected to radiation fallout equivalent to 400 Hiroshima's. In 1986, reactor number four at Chernobyl's nuclear power plant blew up, triggering fires and a chain reaction of explosions that exposed the core, resulting in a nuclear meltdown. Clouds of radioactive dust were sent high into the air and were carried on the wind for hundreds of kilometers. In the immediate vicinity of the power plant, this radioactive dust settled in a blanket of deadly fallout, leaving a post-apocalyptic, radiation-soaked dead zone, a deserted city, and an irreparably damaged ecosystem that no one wanted. But if the scale of the disaster wasn't enough, there was something about the timing that made its impact even worse. It had happened in April, springtime, a time when flowers were coming into bloom, when insects were feeding and in turn becoming food for bigger creatures. Radioactivity is especially damaging to cells that are beginning to divide. In other words, growing organisms were especially vulnerable. The forest floor, with its fresh new growth, soon intensified the ground levels of radiation. The animals of the exclusion zone are all radioactive, but the predicted genetic mutations are extremely rare. One strange phenomenon is the change in sexual behavior of the river's aquatic worms. They used to reproduce asexually or alone, but they've started having sex with each other. Sexual reproduction may strengthen genes that could protect them from radiation damage. Chernobyl's wildlife may be more remarkable than we think. The cat is now making her way home with a fresh kill. It's another vital meal for her litter. But everything she eats and everything she brings home for her kittens is laced with radioactivity. For their size, rodents contain higher doses of radiation than larger mammals. This is because they spend a lot of their time close to the ground and in burrows where the concentrations of radioactivity are still high. Just like a big cat, she brings back live plutonium-packed prey for her kittens to play with, teaching them how to hunt. Radioactive elements actually behave much like nutrients. They accumulate as they pass up the food chain. Everything from insects to plant eaters experiences a buildup of radioactivity, becoming concentrated in larger predators. of radiation every time it feeds on plant-eating prey. One fast track for radiation entering the food chain has been through fungi. Along with bacteria, they are nature's most prolific decomposers. So their role in circulating radioactivity through the environment is crucial. They absorb radioactivity, just as they would nutrients, directly from the ground. 
Wild boar now thrive in the zone's forests. Their favorite food is mushrooms, and they can absorb over 30 times the safe levels of radioactivity during the peak growth season. As he sleeps off his travels, the wolf is woken by the sound of mushroom digging boar. But he's alone, and if he breaks cover, he'll be taking on an entire herd. Despite the fact that wild boar feed on mushrooms, they have immense power and sharp tusks, making them extremely dangerous. They could easily fight off a lone wolf. <laughs> 